in this session let us see starters in three phase induction motor basically of course one great interview question is there here okay why we have to keep starters in induction motor okay the question may look trivial but let us uh, discuss like you know for example have you seen any dc motor without starter no all dc motor should have should have like you know starters and transformer transformer in transformer will never have starters okay and in induction motor starters may be there may not be there okay basically if you think of transformer transformer for example transformer primary is like motor only no transformer primary is like motor only okay so this is primary of the transformer now if i switch on if i switch on if i switch on the motor kind of like you know primary like motor it will absorb electrical power okay so if i switch on huge currents will flow huge currents will flow those currents we call it as inrush currents inrush currents okay but about inrush i couldn't deal because it is not like you know detailed course okay detailed course we will see anyway inrush currents like you know we don't get any problems kind of so huge currents will flow okay now if you think of dc motor also for example this is dc motor in dc motor also in dc motor also like you know okay so in dc motor also starters like you know before without starter if you close the switch if you close the switch huge currents will flow so starter is compulsory here we never use starter here we never use starter here and if you think of induction motor we may use starter or we may not use starter okay means kind of direct online starter we say direct online in the sense directly to the line we are going to connect and we will we should have starter in dc motor okay why why basically in dc motor it is not because like you know motor at starting huge currents will flow that's why starter should be there no no basically for example this is one electrical conductor electrical conductor which is designed for 10 amperes okay so if i inject more than 10 amperes through this conductor what will happen it will burn no it may not okay think think uh, seriously like you know for example this is 10 amperes designed conductor for example you are injecting 40 amperes through it 40 amperes through it then what will happen means because of this huge current like you know more than design value of current temperature rise of this conductor temperature rise of this conductor will continuously increase 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 till melting point of the conductor okay so for example before reaching this before reaching this temperature to melting point before that if for example if this conductor current is going to become 10 amperes or 1 ampere okay for example this is going to be 10 amperes designed conductor and you are injecting 40 amperes you are injecting 40 amperes but still like you know we can design only 10 amperes area of cross section of copper only provided this 40 amperes should come down to 10 amperes or less than 10 amperes before it reaching the melting point is the point okay for example in transformer in transformer do huge currents like you know four to five times full load current four to five times rated current can flow can flow but still we don't use starter why because that particular current will come back to normal two to six percent very small amount of full load current which is nothing but near no load current okay if that particular huge current will come back to normal current in very short time okay for example for example if any transmission line or if any transformer is short circuited is short circuited then huge currents will flow or not okay for example rated current of this transformer rated current of this transformer is 100 amperes for example just like that as an example but because of short circuit huge currents are flowing those currents are 500 amperes for example okay so now point here is point here is should i design this conductor area of cross section of conductor to 500 amperes or 100 amperes 200 amperes only provided you have trust upon the circuit breaker for example here i'm going to have a circuit breaker now if you have trust upon the circuit breaker or if you are sure that the circuit breaker is going to isolate the faulty section faulty section before this particular winding is going to burn okay under that condition though fault current is going to 500 amperes i need not design for 500 amperes i can design for 100 i can design for 100 because even though fault current is 500 amperes now before this particular wire is going to melt okay this circuit breaker is isolated will isolate under that condition 100 amperes is sufficient no logic is that now let us think of like you know dc motor 
in dc motor basically like you know if you start transformer huge currents will flow if you start dc motor also huge currents will flow it is not to protect the motor from huge currents but it is to protect the motor because that huge value of currents will flow for more time such that windings will burn that is the logic okay so point here is very simple for example means uh, in dc motor for example you know i know e equal to pi z by 60 into p by a okay pi z by 60 into p by a now for example e is directly proportional to n pi because z number of conductors 60 constant number of poles constant number of parallel paths constant so e is directly proportional to n pi okay for example if i have dc motor like you know dc motor let me supply voltage here now for example if i supply voltage directly here directly here okay then what will happen at starting conditions forget about the flux okay so flux for example shunt field or whatever it may be if i think of shunt field here shunt field here the moment i close the switch almost instantaneous almost instantaneously like you know flux will be formed flux will be formed so e is directly proportional again <coughs> Okay. Now, at starting, how much will be the speed of the rotor? Speed of the rotor is going to be zero. So, what is the back EMF is going to be zero? So, how much current will flow through this? How much current will flow through this? V minus E by R A. <coughs> that E is going to be zero. So, V by R A. V by R A, huge values of currents will flow. Huge values of currents will flow. Now, logic here is, we are not going to keep starter because of huge value of currents. Let us see now. For example, the speed is zero. That's why back MF is zero. That's why huge values of currents are flowing. Now, how much time it will take to build the back EMF? Okay, means for example, my rotor is there. My rotor is there. My rotor at standstill conditions, which is not rotating. Now, under steady state conditions, it is supposed to reach 1000 RPM, for example. Okay, now as of now, the rotor is standstill. Now, once you close the switch, once you close the switch, my rotor will be gradually, gradually, rotor will be increased to the speed of rated speed such that rated back mf will come now this transient will be there in the system okay so because how much time it take mechanically to rotate the rotor from 0 rpm to 1000 rpm till that point transient will be there no? okay so till that point back mf will continuously increase so till that point transient current will be there okay so how much time it take to start from 0 rpm to 1000 rpm it is going to mechanically we have to rotate the rotor so it is combined with okay or it is connected with mechanical time constant okay so the moment it is connected with mechanical time constant in this is it, it take more time means that my windings will burn if you don't use starter okay so means e is directly proposed n speed matters here speed matters here so logic is very simple of course in detail course we will go in depth for time being it's more than now okay so point here is like you know in dc motor compulsory starter should be there compulsory starter should be there without starter dc motor will not be there with starter transformer will not be there in induction like you know we may have starter or we may not have starter we will see for example in induction motor in induction motor in induction motor if i think of induction motor here okay so if i think of induction motor here okay so the moment i supply the what do you say uh, input input supply input voltage then what will happen definitely huge currents will flow starting currents will flow but the disadvantage here is those starting currents will have the power factor of very less power factor okay because from the circuit diagram already we have seen okay so this is going to be starting current starting current with starting power factor of very less so it demands huge reactive power huge reactive power so the moment it's a huge reactive power terminal voltage roof will be there because in power systems anyway we are going to see like you know there is a link between voltage and reactive power so the moment it takes huge reactive power terminal voltage of the source will be reduced that's why let me tell you one example here like you know especially in villages and all we observe okay in our refrigerator refrigerator fridge uh, some small motor will be there okay so that motor like you know it's automatic motor and you don't have any starter you don't have any starter now if you have incandescent lamp okay like many of the village guys might have seen this like you know if you have incandescent lamp and for example if refrigerator start if refrigerator motor start immediately we will see flickering in the incandescent lamp 
Why you know? Because the moment my induction motor starts, it demands huge reactive power, so source voltage will be dipped. Okay, so the purpose of induction motor starter is forget about the motor because my induction motor designed by Tesla okay is much rugged machine, the most rugged machine. Okay, so the moment it's most rugged machine for machine forget about it nothing may happen to the machine but my focus is upon the source so in induction motor starter will be there not to protect the motor but to protect the source in dc motor starter will be there to protect the motor anyway point here is very simple okay so in induction motor starter will be there to protect the source for example if my motor capacity is small okay if the motor capacity is small such that reactive power demand Maybe less under that condition my terminal voltage dip maybe less maybe less under that condition directly we can start okay directly we can start with DOL starter but anyway let us derive one small funny equation okay because like you know in uh, gate one time they have given three questions in starters okay three questions like you know common data questions three into two six marks okay now let us see like you know starting currents for example if i directly connect with dol starter dol starter is directly source voltage rated voltage are applied under that conditions let us calculate starting currents okay so starting currents you know directly v1 divided by r2 by s equal to 1 square plus x2 square under root okay so this is going to be directly rated voltage Anyway, of course, if I don't consider RTH at next stage, if I consider RTH at next stage, that also will come, it doesn't matter. Okay, now how much will be the T starting is going to be M by omega S into I square into R2 by S, M by omega S into PG. Okay, now how much will be the full load tar is going to be M by omega S into IFL square into R2 by SFL. At starting conditions, S equal to 1. Okay, now let me calculate starting by T full load equal to M by omega S, M by omega S, R2, R2. So, I starting by IFL square into SFL is the formula. Okay, which we are going to use. Keep a, make a note of it. If you, like, you know, if you are uh, very new to the equation, okay. Now, like, you know, this is going to be the equation which, like, you know, we are going to use in different parts of the starters, okay. First thing is DOL starter. DOL starter in the sense, directly my source voltage, rated voltages will be applied. Okay, so directly we are going to apply rated voltages, rated voltages. Now, as I told you, there are two things we have to focus. As of now, you may not understand, but the moment we enter into auto transformer starter, our kind of start delta starter, you will understand. Okay, so for the, even in our previous session of problem solving also, I said that. Okay, so for the starting torque, phase currents are required. In order to calculate dip in source voltage, line currents are required or source currents are required. Okay, but anyway, this current equal to this current now. This current equal to this current now. Let us think of it is connected in star or delta. Anything, your wish. Okay, so for example, if I supply rated voltage line. Okay, so here across this, this is going to be rated voltage line. Okay, so this is going to be rated voltage phase. If it's if you supply rated voltage phase here, rated voltage sorry starting currents phase will go. In the sense here, starting currents phase will go. Okay, so for this equation is same that is TST by T full load equal to IST by IFL square into SFL. Okay, so this this particular equation should be used. Make a note of it, please. IST by I for AFL square in calculating ratio of starting torque to full load torque, IST should be taken per phase inside the motor. Okay, and uh, no, we have to keep an eye on this current. Okay, now for example, let us think of resistor starter. Okay, so if I think of resistor starter. resistor starter we are going to keep resistor 
okay now of course here also one great interview question is there immediately after this we are going to see that question like you know as a starter will you prefer resistor starter or reactor starter very great discussion keep tuned okay now for example let me have resistor let me have resistor let me have resistor in each phase and now let me connect these three two okay three phases then let us analyze let us analyze the situation now for example you supplied rated voltage line if it is connected in star for example okay so if it is a line voltage this is going to be rated voltage line this is going to be after resistor no resistor drop will be there no so this is going to be x times rated voltage line okay so x is the reduction factor now this is going to be x times rated voltage phase okay now starter when do you use starter when rotor is about to start means that what is the rotor speed zero means that block rotor test block rotor test means that in transformer yes it is means that it is series branch parameters series branch parameters okay so in series branch parameters in the sense linear parameters if you reduce voltage by x times current also will be reduced by x times okay so my current will be x times for example this is going to be starting current now directly if you supply rated voltage how much current will flow for example at starting means primary sorry stator rotor okay so this is going to be r1 x1 x2 r2 by s is 1 s equal to 1 so if you supply directly rated voltage directly rated voltage huge currents will flow no? so those currents let me call it as isc okay so if it is reduced by x factor means my currents also will be reduced by x factor that's it okay so if it is x times reduced here currents will be x times reduced reduce so for example from here to here if voltage is reduced by 50 percent 50 percent so phase currents will be reduced by 50 percent source current will be reduced by 50 percent now let us think of torque how torque is reduced like you know tst by tfl equal to equal to in direct like you know if i directly apply if i directly apply let me rename it as isc okay so isc because directly i supply rated voltage now if i directly supply rated voltages it is going to be isc now it is reduced by x times isc so this is going to be x times isc by ifl square into sfl okay so this is going to be x square into isc by ifl square into sfl okay so what is the great logic here this particular starter may not be that much like you know better version because my currents are reduced by x times for example if you reduce the voltage by 50 percent my currents are reduced by 50 percent but torque is reduced by 50 percent square in the sense torque is reduced to just 25 percent so starting torque is heavily reduced but source current is not that much reduced so that is kind of disadvantage in this starter okay in the next immediately next next session we are going to discuss about very good interview questions like you know resistor starter reactor starter like you know whether reactor starter is there or not and uh, like you know why we prefer resistor starter only though reactor starter don't have like you know losses and all we will discuss